My friends call me Walter. I'm a retired railroader, a rail fan, a YouTuber, a veteran, a writer, and even a bit of a webmaster. During my lifetime, I've indulged in many endeavors, so some may call me a know-it-all, but I just consider myself a jack-of-all-trades, and I admit I would fit in anywhere as a redneck. Today, I suppose a majority of people would consider me as being old, but not everyone is younger than me, so I'll bet those senior to me wouldn't say that I was old, even though I've been kicking now for 66 years. I awoke this Sunday morning reflecting on how things have changed in my time. I was around during the time of many historical events. Man going to the moon, robots exploring other planets, the birth of the electronic age, and far too many things to mention. But today I reflect on some things that most of my younger viewers probably never even considered about the way we live that has changed. Things that we all just take for granted these days. I'll try to mention just a few of them that come to mind. Being from rural Georgia, many things about the way we lived when I was young were very slow to catch up with the way city folks lived already. We lived more like the people a hundred years ago lived. We didn't have modern conveniences. Imagine, unless you're old enough to remember, how you would deal with the things we did, many of which everyone now just takes for granted. We did not have running water. If you wanted a glass of water, some of us could go to the kitchen or work a handle and get water pumped up from the well. Others had to walk to a spring and carry water to the house in a bucket. I remember one place I lived where I had to carry water from the spring. The bucket sat on the counter and a dipper was beside it. Everyone drank from the same dipper. We did get a drinking glass to use at supper time, however. When it was the time to take a bath, we bathed in a galvanized wash tub on the back porch, the same tub that my mother used to wash our clothes in. I can still see her swooshing the clothes around in the soapy water and scrubbing them up and down on a washboard. To get the clothes dry, they had to be taken outside and hung on a clothesline in the backyard. Our meals were cooked on a wood cook stove. There was a small wood stove in the living room floor that supplied us heat for the house during the winter. Both stoves required wood in our house, and it was mine and my younger brother's job to saw, chop, and carry the wood in. These days, no one in their right mind would give their kid an axe, a big long cross-cut saw, and send them out to chop wood, but we had to do it. I remember one time nearly killing myself by chopping wood too close to the clothesline. In the process of swinging the axe, it caught on the clothesline, sprang back, and knocked me in the head. It's amazing I still have all my fingers, too. We used to have to split fire-starting splinters with an axe. The only way you could get a fire started without, with some splinters. I can't help but wonder now how we ever got by without all the paper products available. Think just how many things there are. We have paper plates, paper napkins, paper towels, paper cups, and yes, even paper toilet paper. And I won't even mention paper diapers. Could today's young people even conceive living without paper products? These products are used once, tossed in a can, hauled off to be buried in a landfill somewhere. Come on, barbecue man, let's go. What few paper items we had were simply tossed in a burn barrel out in the back of the property somewhere and occasionally someone threw in a lighted match. The first time I had the luxury of using indoor plumbing at home, I think I was 11 or 12 at the time, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Just imagine, no more having to get up, get dressed, put my shoes on, light a lantern, traipse out to the back of the property to a smelly little wooden building built over a hole in the ground just to use the potty. Got a vulture in the road. Let's go, buzzard, get out of the way. And real toilet paper, my lord, what was the world coming to? I kind of wish I had a dollar now for every time I've had to wipe with a page torn from a Sears and Roebuck catalog. Nowadays, if you have a cold and you come down with a runny nose, you can't get by without a box of tissues to clear the nasal passages. 
What did we blow our nose on? I'll tell you. Everyone carried a handkerchief. You blew your nose on it and jammed it in your pocket for the next time you needed to blow. Then you dragged it out, searched for an unused spot, and blew again. Yep, back in the old pocket it went. And at the end of the day, we carried it home for Mama to wash. When I got older and I had my own kids, they had everything one could imagine to play with. Video games, televisions, music players, and a hundred other things. So the first time one came to me and said, Dad, I'm bored. There's nothing to do. I was flabbergasted. I think kids today have missed out on some serious developmental essentials like using one's imagination to create something to do. We didn't have any of the stuff kids have now. We, we played games out in the yard, like hide and seek, tag, kick the can, and could derive great pleasure from rolling an old car tire down the road or climbing trees and roaming in the woods in search of snakes and critters. And no self-respecting boy at the time would be caught dead without a slingshot and a pocket full of marbles. I suppose I'm now making up for the things I never got to do as a kid. I sit on my rear half the day on the internet in front of a computer in an air-conditioned house with real electricity and real running water. If I get bored, I can go sit in front of a television and pick, a, and pick through a couple hundred channels to watch. But most of the stuff they keep offering us they ain't fit to watch anyway, or something I've already seen. So it boggles my mind sometimes the things I remember that are different today than they were in the past. There isn't much of a moral to this story except appreciate what you have, because it could be a lot worse. I guess that's all for now. I thank you for listening.